We all probably understand how randomness generally works in a game. We're all familiar with things like rolling a dice or shuffling a deck of cards to prevent anyone from being able to predict exactly what will happen. And if you are designing a game with randomness in it, that basic knowledge can get you pretty far. But understanding how computers actually create randomness will make you better at designing and debugging any code that uses randomness and also let you make more interesting things like seeds for procedurally generated worlds or dailies in a roguelike. If you don't already know the answer to that question, then it might be an interesting exercise to pause the video and try to come up with one. Because the way computers work is sort of a general oversimplification is you provide the computer with some input, the computer runs that input through an algorithm and returns some output. And how do you have an algorithm produce something that is truly random? The answer is you don't. Unless the computer is sampling some external data as part of its algorithm, random number generators are more accurately called pseudo-random number generators, or PRNGs, because they look random, but the numbers they produce are actually not random at all. In fact, if you give the algorithm the same input, it will produce the same output every single time. PRNGs work like this. You provide the PRNG with some starting number, a seed, or perhaps the PRNG has one built in, and the PRNG then runs that seed through its algorithm to get you a new random number. And that new random number becomes the seed for the next time the PRNG runs. So every time you ask for a new random number, this process repeats. So it's not just the first number that is determined by the seed, but it is every single number after that, the whole sequence of random numbers from then on. This is how seeds work in games like Valheim, Minecraft, Spelunky, and so on. Since these games use PRNGs to create their game world, and PRNGs aren't truly really random, if you give that PRNG the same input, the seed, then its output will be the same every single time, allowing you to create things like identical procedurally generated worlds where everyone gets the same world, or dailies where everyone gets the same run despite the fact that these things are being randomly generated. A very basic example of a PRNG is the middle squared method. With this PRNG, what you do is you give it a four digit number. This is the seed. You then square this four digit number. And then you take the middle four numbers from this square. And these middle four numbers are the new number. So you square this number, take the middle four numbers, square this number, take the middle four numbers. And this is a pseudo random number generator. But let's jump over to GameMaker and look at a more sophisticated PRNG in code. Now, you shouldn't actually use this PRNG. You should use GameMaker's built-in random functions as they are much better, as we'll see in a moment. But we can't look at the internal code in those functions, so we're gonna use this one instead as an example, but only as an example of what a PRNG is. Let's start with the random function itself. We'll declare some static variables. I've taken these from a coding math tutorial, which I'll link to down below and at the end of this video. We give it a seed. For the moment, I'm gonna make this seed a static variable as well. And then we have the actual algorithm, and it really is just this one line. Notice that we are taking the seed, doing a bit of math on it, and assigning the value produced by that math back to the seed. So every time this function is run, the seed value is used in the algorithm, and the result of the algorithm is stored as the new seed value, just as with the middle squared method. So if we give the algorithm the same number, the same seed value, we'll get the same result, even the same sequence of results forever, because it's just an algorithm and given the same input, it's gonna provide the same output. Now, this function won't actually be that useful as is, so I'm gonna make a couple changes to it. First, I'm gonna make the seed value a global variable. Now we can access and change this value. And then I'm going to divide the seed value by m, which will convert it to a value between zero and one, and then I'm going to allow this function to take an argument that I'll call range, and we'll multiply this value, which is now between zero and one, by range so that we can get a random number between zero and another number of our choosing. Finally, I can come up here and set range's default value to one. This, by the way, is a new feature just added to GameMaker. And if you're unfamiliar with it, I did a tutorial on it, and there is a link in the top right. Now what we have is a random function that is pretty similar to the built-in GameMaker random function, except that it isn't as good. But we have a problem. As is, this function always starts with the same seed. And of course, we could change it here inside of GameMaker. We could give it a different number. But it's still always going to be the same once we compile the game. How do we get it to be different each time someone runs the program? 
Well, like I said at the start, we essentially need to rely on something external. And I've chosen to rely on something which is always changing and the computer has easy access to, the current date time. So in our custom randomized function here, we can simply set the global seed value to current date time. And if you call randomize, because the date time is always changing, the seed will always be different. And hopefully at this point you now understand why you generally only need to call randomize once because once you've set the seed to a unique value, from there on the sequence of numbers will also be random, or at least appear to be random as we've learned. But let's round out all this code with a few visual examples of randomness. Here's our first one. I've created an array of random numbers where the numbers will be in a range between zero and room height. And then in the draw event, I'm looping through that array and drawing a line between each number using the random number for the Y value and the position in the array with some spacing for the X value. And then in the step event, I'm adding another random number to the end of the array and removing a random number from the start of the array. So if I run this, we can see the sequence of random numbers connected by lines. And like I said at the start, there's no way to predict what any given number is going to be based upon what came before it. It is effectively random. Let's look at one more example. This is where we're going to see the PRNG that I've made break down. Here, I am doing a double for loop and drawing a one pixel wide square for every single pixel across the entire screen. I'm setting its color based upon a random value between 0 and 255. And by the way, I'm drawing this to a surface so that I only need to run this section of code once. The rest of the time I can just draw the surface. Now you can see that when I run this, the PRNG I coded breaks down and a pattern starts to emerge. I can restart the room as many times as I want, the pattern still exists. For comparison's sake, if I come over here to the code, switch the random function here with GameMaker's built-in random function and run it again, it would look like this. And you can see there is no discernible pattern. So as I said before, the PRNG that I created is not very good, but hopefully it did serve its purpose for illustrating and explaining how PRNGs work. So remember that randomness for a computer isn't truly random. It looks random, but is actually predictable. PRNGs use an algorithm and given the same input, the algorithm produces the same output. So by controlling the input, the seed that the PRNG gets, you can control the output, the random numbers that the PRNG returns, allowing you to put more interesting things into your game. So that's it for PRNGs, but I am working on a tutorial for Perlinoise and that should be out pretty soon. 